What's up guys, Chase Oliver here, bringing you another video to my channel. This is the Go Home Show review for WWE Raw. SummerSlam is this Sunday. By the way, tomorrow on my channel, I am doing a live preview and predictions for WWE SummerSlam 2014. I'm going to be joined by Heel Steven and OK Fabe here on YouTube. So come join in on the fun. It will happen 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come in and join the fun. Let's get started with this Raw. Paul Heyman comes out with Brock Lesnar and cuts the usual Paul Heyman promo when he's with Brock Lesnar. WWE change it up with Lesnar. We already know the dude's a beast. Y'all don't need to go into this explanation why he's a beast. We know he's a beast. Just have him come out and beat up some jobbers. That would be a little bit more effective than having Paul Heyman just explain why he's a beast. I just really didn't care for this promo segment all too much. I, I guess Heyman rapping, I guess, was cool. But other than that, this segment I just felt was a dud and didn't really do much to hype me up for the SummerSlam match this Sunday. Corporate Kane's back, who cares? He puts Roman Reigns in a handicap match with Rybaxel, which I'm saying to myself, okay, Rybaxel is not a threat to fucking Roman Reigns. Like, these two have not done shit as a tag team. Like, it's not like these guys are tag team champions for many, many months, and these guys are actual legit tag team that can't be stopped. No, they're just two bums that they threw together. And you expect me to believe that Roman Reigns is going to lose to these guys? And, and why did they have it where Rybaxel beats up Roman Reigns to the point where they got disqualified? I mean, at the end of the segment, anyways, Roman Reigns beat the shit out of both of them, so why not Roman Reigns win clean? I mean, he has a big match with Randy Orton at SummerSlam. You would think you wanted him to make as make him look as dominant as possible. It's not like you guys are using Ryback as a future tag team ta champion. You're not using Ryback so as future tag team title threats or future tag team champions. So why did you guys have to protect Ryback so in this situation? Uh, it, just, it just made no sense, and I didn't like how they made Roman Reigns talk afterwards. I felt, you know, why make Roman Reigns talk? It's better when Roman Reigns doesn't talk too much. It makes it feel more special when he does get onto the microphone. I mean, what he did to end this segment where he Superman punched both Curtis Axel and Ryback and then hit them both with spears, that was good enough. That's how you end the segment. You show the replay, and then you hype up the next match. You didn't need to have Roman Reigns talk here. Just to me, not really a good job on executing with Roman Reigns here tonight by the WWE. Rollins versus RVD had a good match. I just didn't really care about it because I've seen this match so many times and I just felt storyline progression wise, it would have made sense if, you know, Heath Slater took on Seth Rollins. That's just me personally. I did find it funny, however, that Dean Ambrose came out of the present. I thought that was hilarious shit and that was good stuff by the WWE. I'm not a fan that this match is taking place in a lumberjack match, but at least the WWE kind of addressed the reasons why they're doing a lumberjack match with this segment here tonight, but. I still don't care that this match is in a Lumberjack match. You'll get my full thoughts on this match being in a Lumberjack match at SummerSlam and the SummerSlam preview and predictions. It was just a decent segment, but nothing that really got me on the edge of my seat or made me felt very, very entertained. The Jericho one-on-one -on -one sit down, another solid promo. I'm just saying to myself, like, these guys have been talking and talking and talking way too much in their feud already. Why do I care about more? the more they talk? Like, really, I, I just didn't care that these two were sitting down in the same room and they were talking. I mean, White has been talking this whole feud and Jericho has been talking this whole feud. The only thing Jericho has done action-wise is beat up, you know, Wyatt's goonies and minions that are pretty much worthless to Bray Wyatt anyways. And Bray Wyatt, has Bray Wyatt even wrestled a match since losing that payback? Has Bray Wyatt even wrestled a one-on-one -on -one singles match on television since losing to Jericho at payback? I can't even remember the last time seeing Bray Wyatt wrestle in the ring. I really can't. This one-on-one -on -one little promo did not get me excited for their SummerSlam match. I'm still not excited for it. Could the match be good? Yeah, but I just didn't really care. You would have thought Summer 2014 Cesaro would be featured in a main feud going into SummerSlam, and Jack Swagger would be a bum losing to Adam Rose almost every other week on TV. Boy, have the ro roles reversed. Cesaro now is like the bum losing to bums on TV, and Jack Swagger is getting a huge push against... Rusev, honestly, Swagger Cesaro, okay match. Swagger wins via submission, makes sense. Makes Swagger look strong for the upcoming Rusev match this Sunday at SummerSlam. You know, Rusev coming out and Swagger coming out doing a stare down. That was fine. It, it is what it is, but I just wasn't excited during any of this, in my personal opinion. They should have went with my idea last week, giving Jack Swagger the endorsement by the almighty Hulkster brother, but they didn't. Eva Marie defeated AJ Lee thanks to Paige coming out and skipping around. As for Paige's poem, it was cool. Heidenreich approved of it, so I guess it was a cool poem that Paige cut. 
the buildup, you know, I, I knew that mostly when it comes to go-home shows, they don't do a good job building up for the Divas division. You mostly have to watch SmackDown for good Divas buildup when it comes down to it. So I was expecting something weak. You know, it, it, this was fine. It, it was okay. You, you know, after seeing AJ Lee lose, though, I clearly think she's going to retain at SummerSlam, which I totally disagree with. And you can see that in my SummerSlam preview and predictions why I would disagree with it. But it was just random. You know, Eva Marie, she gets like the win over AJ Lee, right? And she was all celebrating like she was fine. And then all of a sudden, Eva Marie's on the ground acting like she's hurt. And then AJ Lee beats the shit out of her. I was like, what, what the hell? What happened to Eva Marie? She looked fine. Why, why all of a sudden she was on the ground and she was holding her head? That was just random. But they did all right with the Divas. Just nothing that was really entertaining. Cena's promo was solid. Yeah. Solid promo by John Cena. It wasn't a great promo. I, I don't know why everyone thinks anytime Cena does these promos, everyone's like, oh, this is great. Like, when Cena gets serious, all of a sudden he can cut good promos. I mean, it was just a solid promo. I mean, it was the usual Cena promo when he faces someone that, you know, he's going to get predominantly booed against. He goes, I'm here every day. I do everything right, Jack. I make sure that I'm here for the Cena Nation. I make sure that you people have the champion you deserve. When is Cena going to say enough? When is Cena going to take off the ball cap, take off the t-shirt, and finally unleash? That will never happen because I stay loyal to each and every one who believes in me. It's it's the usual Cena promo. I don't know why everyone thought this was some really great promo. It, it was just solid. You know, the last really great Cena promo, in my opinion, Cena and Brian, when they had that War of the Word segment, you know, the Miz TV segment last year, that was a great Cena promo. This, uh, it was just a solid Cena promo. Usual, typical John Cena stuff. So, that's all I really got to say about it. And also, I don't know how I feel about Cena wearing the red and yellow. And what's with the white jorts? They don't really mesh that well. And the red knee I don't like Cena's new attire. That's all I got to say. I knew once I saw the Miz on commentary, I was like, oh, Dolph Ziggler's losing this match to Heath Slater because I saw Heath Slater in the ring. I was hoping they didn't have Dolph Ziggler lose by pinfall. Thankfully, he only lost by countout, which I'll take. I'm not that mad about it. It makes sense. He was more distracted with The Miz, and The Miz was doing a good job distracting him. So I'll say at least it made sense. For some reason, Heath Slater is now over. Like He's like everyone's favorite wrestler now. I, I, I don't know why. I've always liked Heath Slater, but I don't know why everyone's on the Heath Slater bandwagon now. So, it is what it is. I give it two months before people get sick and tired of Heath Slater and all that other crap. But they did decent stuff for the IC title this week. Just none of it was entertaining to me. Now, I do love Randy Orton. Don't get me wrong, people. But when it comes to Randy Orton's opponents, the one guy I hate Randy Orton facing is Sheamus. Why? Because I feel Orton and Sheamus put on boo-boo bad matches. I cannot remember any good Orton and Sheamus matches. That is just my opinion. I just never feel these guys mesh well. And pretty much this whole match, I felt the same way, minus the ending of the awesome RKO and leaning RKO pose that Randy Orton did. The leaning RKO pose was sick as hell. But... Other than that, I just did not really care that much about Orton versus Sheamus. I'm glad that Orton picked up the win. He looks strong in this win. And finally, we see Sheamus on TV, and he's still the same bland, boring babyface. Come on, WWE. Do it already. Stop making Sheamus bland and boring. Turn him heel. But hey, Orton won, so I can't complain. To me, I felt the WWE for Raw tonight was extremely boring. I felt they did a decent enough job building up for the matches, but it was just kind of like they were phoning in. They were like, you know what? Let's get what we need to get onto this show. The biggest thing that we're going to try on the show is Hulk Hogan's birthday. That's the one segment we going or we, we are going to try our asses for. But the rest of the show, and eh, we're just going to coast on through it. It was a very boring episode. Don't get me wrong. They did have some decent build for SummerSlam. But this Raw was just so hard to sit through. It was just so boring. And I felt like they missed a huge opportunity with Hulk Hogan's birthday being on this Raw. Remember the Rock's birthday party episode, guys? You know, where they had it where Rock was interacting with different superstars and divas backstage. Why in the blue hell couldn't we have something like that with Hulk Hogan where we're having a backstage birthday party for Hulk Hogan and then we have it where we have the huge Hogan celebration in the ring? How, how come we couldn't have that? So many of these superstars and divas would love to have the rub working with a Hulk Hogan backstage. That is just huge enough for them. I felt that you could have used that Hulk Hogan backstage party and have it where, you know, they, you can build off feuds there. That, that's just me. You know, I felt they missed a huge opportunity with this episode. They should have used Hogan's star power more worthwhile in this episode. But in all honesty, when it comes down to Hulk Hogan's in-ring celebration for his birthday, I loved it. 
I love the video packages. I love the surprise returns of Ric Flair. Seeing Ric Flair there, that was awesome. Mr. Orndorff, Paul, Paul Orndorff, Mr. Wonderful. Holy fucking shit. Mr. Wonderful is here. I, I was surprised as hell to see Mr. Wonderful. You know, most of the fans didn't know who Mr. Wonderful is, and that's a shame on you about that. But really, to be honest, it was nice seeing Mr. Wonderful come out to the ring. Roddy Piper coming out. That shit was awesome. And then you have the NWO. Oh, my God. I felt this was awesome stuff. This was good stuff. And I felt you should have just ended it with the happy birthday song after Hogan's wearing the NWO shirt, after we did survey time. We have it where Hogan ends the episode blowing out candles. That's how I would have ended this episode. But you know the WWE, they have to build up their big main event match. Here comes Lesnar. Out comes Cena to make the save. It wasn't like Brock Lesnar was going to do anything. I mean, in all honesty, I just felt this was a waste of space for Brock Lesnar and Cena. I felt they could have just had it where, you know, we celebrate Hulkamania. That's just me. I didn't, I didn't really think you needed Cena and Lesnar to end off the show. I mean, Lesnar didn't do shit. It wasn't like Lesnar ruined the birthday cake. Like, could like I would understand if they had Hogan blow out the candles and then Lesnar's music hits and then Lesnar throws the cake and then he's staring down with Hogan and it looks like he's going to do shit with Hogan and then Cena comes out. Okay, that's fine, but they didn't have any of that, so it is what it is. I just kind of wish they ended it with Hulk Hogan for tonight, but that's just my opinion. Overall, this show to me was just boring. They did have some decent build towards SummerSlam, like, can't deny that there, but I just wasn't enthralled for the three hours I was watching Raw. The best part of Raw's to me was Dean Ambrose coming out of a present, Stephanie McMahon yelling yes, uh, probably Randy Orton's RKO to Sheamus, that's for sure up there, and Hulk Hogan's all, whole, all of his birthday celebration. That shit was awesome. Those were only four good segments, and, it, and when I named these segments here, Dean Ambrose coming out of a, of a birthday present, that's only like a minute long or 30 seconds long. Stephanie McMahon yelling yes. That's like 30 seconds of a 10-minute promo. Randy Orton's RKO. That's like 10 seconds in a match. And then Hulk Hogan's birthday said, like, that's 15, 20 minutes of awesomeness. I mean, that's only like what? If you add that all up, like maybe 16 minutes of entertaining television? That's not good, WWE. It isn't. This was just a boring episode. They had some decent buildup, but most of the buildup was kind of bland and boring. Like I said, when I was talking about the Hulk Hogan birthday, it felt like the WWE was just in cruise control saying, let's get on the hell to SummerSlam. That's how I felt this show was coming off to me. I just felt this was a boring episode of Monday Night Raw with some decent buildup to get us ready for SummerSlam. But none of the buildup was like, oh, this is going to be why SummerSlam is going to be one of the greatest pay-per-views of all time. It, it was just whatever, decent episode. But anyways, guys, what did you think about Monday Night Raw this this tonight. Did you think it were you in agreement with me that this was just a boring episode that you just said, man, this episode is putting me to sleep? Or did you actually like this episode? Explain in the comment section down below. Don't forget to give this video a big old thumbs up and make sure you guys follow me on Twitter at Chase Over68 and check out my website, Chilling with Chase. Remember, I got the QA for you guys tomorrow and tune in 9 9 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. For the SummerSlam 2014 live preview and predictions with OK Fabe and Heel Steven on my channel tomorrow. Don't forget to tune in for that. I'll see you all next time. I hope you guys enjoyed your Monday. And remember, happy birthday, Hulkster. See you later, brother.